Welcome to Film Right Mondays. We're going to get to questions on the very colorful office I have going on right now. I got a little overzealous. Also, also I got uh, this in the mail, which doesn't really have anything to do with anything, but I'm excited about it. So there you go. First question, professional audio mixing for film. What's the process? The process for that for me and Rob Kreckle, who does all my sound, is me uh, having a locked cut or as locked as possible. I try not to change anything once we get to this stage. Um, but uh, uh, Rob and I will watch the film doing what's called a spotting session where we'll talk about uh, how each scene should feel, how the sounds in the scene should feel. We'll talk on an emotional level about if there's hits in the attic, for instance, uh, what those things should feel like uh, from Ghost House, um, what the chainsaw should feel like in Chainsaw. Should it feel a little uh, higher pitched whiny? Should it feel like really guttery? Do we want to create our own style? of chainsaw altogether or something very realistic and we go through and spot all those things on you know we're going to need a sound here for that a sound there for this oh i want a sound off screen that you hear this which is going to indicate this to us that type of thing then i send him an omf or other similar thing for him to get all the sound so he can then start doing what he does uh and of course i send him picture with time code attached which i'm doing an episode showing about attaching time code to video pretty soon here uh and that's pretty much it and then he sends me stuff back on frame io or through dropbox and we watch that i send back my thoughts he gives his and on and on we go what's this western deliciousness it's it's not a short film it's like a film right sketch almost uh that we're doing with hit film i'm pretty excited about it it's pretty fun it's coming out may 18th and it's gonna be fun as previously stated. Any advice on writing dialogue? I feel most characters on television are witty, well-spoken, and have PhD vocabularies. I feel like all my dialogue is basic and one-dimensional. Any exercises you know to get better? If I'm being completely honest, I think dialogue is one of my shortcomings. It's something that I have to really work on as well. I feel like if I wrote a script, in the end, there's a good chance that I'm gonna wanna bring someone in to help polish the dialogue, because it's just not one of my strong suits. And I think that's something really important too, is knowing what you're strong at and what you're not and being objective in that. If you're not good at something, that's okay. You're not gonna be good at everything. My strong suits are creating sequences, creating those moments that really get the audience invested, things like that. So for me, being in the same boat as you, I'm always paying attention to what people are talking, like how people actually talk, and then dive into what they actually mean. Um, I, I go between, I try to go between uh, a realistic way of talking and a very specific way of talking because most of us in general conversation don't really say what we actually mean, which is really interesting. And the way that we speak is pretty disjointed and odd half the time. I mean, half the time people aren't even finishing their actual sentence before they move on to the next one. So I don't really go that route because that would be really confusing. Uh, so it's really, uh, somebody put it best when it's, you know, if you had time to think about every single thing that came out of your mouth, that's how dialogue should be. And I would agree with that to some extent, but not always. Uh, but definitely just paying attention to how people talk, definitely watching over and over again the movies that you really like the dialogue of and dissecting that. Maybe start writing out what they're saying. I used to do that. I would write what people actually say and then find your own middle ground and style. What's your thoughts on wardrobe and its effect on mood and the likes? Do you try to stick with the usual black for bad, light for good? Please help. Any advice is great. I definitely don't think of it in those terms or at least try not to. Um, I think of it more in terms of who is this character? What color would they wear? What, what color kind of indicates what I'm trying to say about this person and then going from there. And then I'm always leaning heavily on the people that are helping me with wardrobe because that's definitely another one of my weaknesses. It's not my strong suit. I know what I like so I can say what I like, but actually going out and finding it is really tough for me. I'm not... I'm not that person. But I only stick to more conventional ideas of wardrobe when I'm purposefully trying to point that out uh, and play off of those norms. Otherwise, that definitely has no bearing on it. But wardrobe, like location, is one of the most important things for really locking in a tone, feel, and look, and really getting your audience to dive in and believe what they're looking at. As a beginning filmmaker on a budget, is it best to write a script based on the person slash actors you know, or is it best if you just write a script and find the actors afterwards that fit perfectly for those roles? That depends entirely 
entirely on if you're confident that you can go out and cast and find those people. Definitely earlier in my career, I was writing for the people that I know that I could use in my films. So definitely writing toward their strengths and who they were as people. And if I didn't have people that could pull off dramatic acting, I would write comedy instead. And if I did want to do a thriller, I would do a thriller with a comedic twist. And we do that type of stuff a lot anyway. Um, so it really just depends if you have the resources or not. If you don't, then write with the people that you know you can use in mind. If you do, then write whatever it is you want to write and then hunt down the people that would be best suited for that role. How do you go about planning your behind the scenes content? Hire Josh Connolly. Here's his Twitter. Except you can't because he works for me and He's really busy. Last question. He, re, 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 thoughts on anamorphic lenses or anamorphic lens adapters? I absolutely love anamorphic lenses. The vibe that you get for them, the tone that they're able to instill into your film and to give it that much more of a filmic feel because it does go along with that old classic sort of vibe that I really love that very much fits my personal taste on how I like my image to look. So I adore anamorphic lenses. Anamorphic adapters are really great too. They definitely aren't a substitute uh, for anamorphic lenses completely, but they are a good step in the right direction. That's where I started by using adapters to sort of get that vibe, but you're not fully going to get that actual feel until you're really diving into some of these great anamorphic lenses. I've used the Kawa anamorphic lenses a few times now. They're vintage, so there's a dirty quality to it, so you get almost this old school filmic style when using them. And I really love that. Lenses and filters, all those things that you put in front of the sensor is probably some of the most important things that you can do to really dial in the look and feel of your film that you want. The sensor is probably like fourth on the list of things that I'm thinking about when I'm thinking about really dialing in an image. If you're a budding filmmaker, entrepreneur, innovator of any kind, Domain.com is a place to go when the next idea hits you. When you get a domain name from Domain.com, you're taking the first steps in creating an identity and vision for your brand or idea. The world's top two premier and most recognizable domain extensions is .com and .net, which means those are the ones that are going to help you build your brand and expand your presence online the best. And of course, they're already reliable, affordable, and easy to use, but they're making it more affordable by giving you 25% off their prices when you use the coupon code FILMRIOT at Domain.com's checkout. So when you think Think domain names, think domain.com. Logo. So that's it for today, which means it's time for my suggestion of the week. And this one comes with a warning. It's definitely on the mature side in the beginning and really throughout. So I would say if I were to give this a rating, it would be rated R. There is nudity up front. So be forewarned. If you don't want to see boobs, don't go to this one. It's a short film called Haze, which I thought was incredibly well done. You can get a link for that in the notes below. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. <laughs>